Yeah, financial independence, um, if you guys, if you and the listeners are interested in learning more about it, it's a whole movement. It's a whole school of thought. Um, a lot of people, you know, I had a friend one time say, well, aren't we all financially independent? Like, we're adults, we have jobs, our, you know, our parents don't give us money. Doesn't that mean you're financially independent? I'm like, yeah, I guess that, that could mean that. Um, but the financial independence movement, or some people also follow one called FIRE, F-I-R-E, Financial Independence Retire Early. Um, like Jared said, it's it's actually more of just like a math equation. Do I have enough saved and invested or some way, um, other form of um, passive income coming in that if I didn't want to, I wouldn't have to work anymore? Um, so Jared, by saving and investing early in his career got to that point after only a full-time three-year working career. Um, it was a little, it was probably four years, but. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're right. Cause it was 2019. So about four years. Me, I'm not as focused on the um, equation side of that number. So I wouldn't say that I have um, met financial independence in terms of like having enough saved invested to never have to work again. But even without having met that financial goal, we were at a I was at a good enough financial spot because we keep our finances separate where I felt comfortable moving into a semi-retirement or um, half the work year uh, working lifestyle. So I actually work a little bit more in our semi-retirement lifestyle than Jared does because I don't have as much money saved because I like to spend a little bit more money. Yeah. Um, and Jared's a little bit more on like side hustles and like finding other ways to make money outside of work. Um, so he's got a little bit more shaped and invested than I do. So for him, he's actually only worked like 10 weeks in the last, what, year and a half, two Almost years? Almost two years. And I've worked a little bit more than that. So um, I've worked more like one to two contracts a year, whereas he hasn't. Like the last contract we did, I only worked and he did not. And semi-retirement might sound like, you know, ridiculous, like taking six months off. But I think as a traveler, it's completely feasible because I've run the numbers. And for us working as permanent therapists in our hometown where we are right now, we would make about the same as we do working six months as travelers. So it's not really like we're taking a massive pay cut. It's just that we're working less and making more when we're working. Um, the difference is only about $2,000 um, per year if we were going to work 12 months a year as a permanent therapist versus, versus two contracts as travelers. So it's not it's not really like we're making way less. It's just that uh, uh, we just have, I guess, more efficient earning money during the time that we do work. Yeah, it's it's interesting because the, the whole financial independence movement, this is a whole nationwide and international thing for anybody of any profession to try to pursue. And I think a lot of times people think, well, you just have to have a job where you are a really high earner, like a some job in, um, I don't know, Wall Street or some big job uh, as an engineer where you can just earn a buttload of money and be able to save and invest and be a bajillionaire by the time you're you know, 35 to be able to do this movement. But we think as therapists, we were actually able to fit into that movement really well because the path of the career choice of being a travel therapist allows you to earn higher. And it also, the so earning is on one side of the equation. Um, and then I know we want to get into talking a little bit about budgeting, how we actually got there, but uh, saving and being frugal is the other side of the equation. And I think that living the lifestyle of being travel therapist kind of allows us to be more minimalistic and more frugal. So it just fits really well. Yeah. 